right. I'm going to call the meeting to order at 5.30. And uh, first thing we'll do is we'll have Gail call the attendance to make sure who's here and that we have a quorum. I think we have Jack. Here. And Terry. Yes. Jackie. Yes. Jerry. Here. Mike Tyler. Here. Mike kept on mute. Oh, we can see him. And Andrew, I don't see Andrew. And Ed, Ed's here. Okay, so uh, Andrew's the only one who's missing? Yep, looks like it. Okay. Uh, all right, the first uh, thing we'll do is um, that you all have seen the March 4th minutes. Uh, Jackie, is there a motion? So moved. Move to accept. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, you know what? I, I just made my first error. Yes. It's not allowed. We have to have Gail call the roll. So please call the roll, Gail. Jack? Yes. Ed? Yes. Terry? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Mike? I'm just going to say. I'm going to unmute. Mike? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Gil. All right. Okay, then the motion is unanimous and it passes. Uh, and we were expecting Tom Hayes to be on. Uh, I'm here. Ah, okay. You just just no video for you, right? But he has oh, okay. video. Oh. No. Okay, so Tom, uh, why don't you uh, give us an update? Uh, I will say that we have the project narratives that we got from CDM Smith. Those were sent out by email. Everyone should have read them. But why don't you tell us what's going on? Okay. Um, as of right now, the gravity thickeners are on standby. Um, we do, you approve the change order to replace the two gear drives for gravity thickeners one and two. We're waiting now for the submittals to be approved by CDM. Uh, they're just double checking with the manufacturer that it is the correct gear drive before we put them into production. And then we're looking at a 10 to 12 week production time to get them to us. And once they get here, then they'll go back into the construction phase of uh, finishing the installation of Gravity Thickener 1. And then they'll go on to Gravity Thickener number 2 and uh, complete that unit. So, uh, Tom, would you explain that? Because I believe that that occurred after the last meeting and I authorized it to go forward, but we should be taking a formal vote of the commission. So could you explain that change order? Yeah, I mean, you should have the change orders and you should have the photos. When they removed the gear reduction unit on gravity thickener number one, um, they removed it differently than when we did number three a couple of years ago. Number three, the torque tube, which is suspends from the gear reduction unit, had sheared off. So they were able to remove the unit in place as one unit and put it aside on the grass while they worked on the gravity thickener. To get this one off, they actually had to separate the gear reducer and basically split it in half. When they did that, they found major corrosion inside the main um, the main bearing for the turntable that supports the weight of all the mechanism that they're replacing. So they looked at different ways of repairing it, um, either to rebuild it or to replace it. And it was determined that actually replacing it with a brand new unit was much cheaper than trying to rebuild the existing one due to the corrosion inside. So that's the route that we decided to take. So um, it's going to put a delay, like I said, 10 to 12 weeks in the project because they do have to, these are made to order. So now that has to be manufactured by Walker Process and shipped to us. And um, I don't have that here in front of me. Uh, what is the cost of that? $89,820.55. That's to do both units, including installation. And uh, most of the cost is obviously the, the units themselves, the gear reduction units themselves. And 
basically, I think the reason I approved it and the reason we're recommending this to the commission is there was no other choice um, and we needed to, you know, get a head start on the lead time. Um, there, the, the gravity thick, thickeners don't operate without it and it had to be replaced. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so uh, do we know what that change order number was, Gail? That was one. Okay. So uh, I would suggest a motion would be in order to approve change order number one uh, in no. the amount of whatever, 89, whatever it was. 2055. Yeah. Um, no is move. there a motion? No move. Second. And does anybody have any questions of Tom on this? If not, then uh, Gail, call the roll. Jack. Yes. Ed. Yes. Terry. Yes. Jackie? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Mike? Yes. Andrew? Still not here. Okay, that's everyone. Okay, so that motion passes. Uh, so uh, what about the, uh, the lime silo, Tom? Where are we on that? Uh, we did change order number two at the same time. That was that was an extension on the lime silo. That's just to line it up with the construction schedule for the gravity thickeners. And also our request also because um, we were told due to the cold COVID situation that we may run into a problem um, getting bulk chemicals with a real quick turnaround. And we couldn't take the chance of emptying the silo for repair and have something happen with the shipping and not be able to get chemicals within a, the 24 hour period that we need to refill the silo. So we felt it was better to take this along with the uh, change order for uh, the gravity thickeners and just do it at the end like we anticipated towards the end of the project. That way there hopefully we'll be out of this whole COVID thing and we'll be in a better position. We won't have to worry about chemical deliveries being delayed. And so that was a no cost change order just as the time, correct? No cost, correct. correct. Okay. Um, then uh, I would suggest Jackie, a motion's in order to approve that change order. No moved. Second. Dale, call the roll. Jack? Yes. Ben? Yes. Terry? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Mike? Yes. Can you hear me, Gail? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, that motion passes. Uh, and then, Tom, the VFD replacement, where's that? It's going well. Um, they came out on site uh, middle of March. So far, we've, we're doing two VFDs a week um, because to stay oper operational in the lift pumps, we can't take more than two down at a time at various uh, pumping stations. We've done all four first stage VFDs. They've all been tested. They've all passed their, their burn-in test. Um, and we just completed one VFD in the South Attleboro pump station and one VFD in the second stage pump station this week. And they're actually coming out tomorrow to do startup and we'll do the uh, skater integration on those. And then we'll run them for until next week to test them. And uh, on Monday, most likely if everything goes well, we're gonna pick two more VFDs and we'll start another two VFDs. And this is the way we're gonna continue until all 19 are done. So we still have a, a number of weeks to go on this, correct? Yeah, we've got six done, so we still have we still have thirteen to do. So you, yeah, you're looking you're looking at um, it's probably seven more weeks, six to seven more weeks, um, at least six, I'd say, though, starting next week at the schedule we're keeping, doing two a week. Okay, and now we feel we the last week. Now, because I looked at my agenda and realized that Gail had put those two change orders on there, I could have sounded uh, a little bit more intelligent. So I do see here that we have application number one for the month of March from uh, uh, Fall River Electric for $154,432. And we have application two for the month of April for 32,000. 8615. Uh, Tom, are you recommending that we pay those applications? Yes. And you're satisfied with the work that has been billed there? Yes. Uh, yeah. The first one was for the VFDs, which all 19 units were delivered to us. And the second one was for the VFDs that they've already installed 
up to that date, and they've all been operating fine. We've had no issues whatsoever. Okay. So uh, are all the VFDs stored at the plant? Yeah, they're all stored in the various locations where they're going to be installed. They, they were delivered at the beginning of March to us, and we took possession of them. Okay, very good. Uh, then, uh, unless anybody has any other questions of Tom, a motion is in order to approve applications one and two from Fall River Electric. Move to approve. Move to approve. Okay, motion is in order. Uh, Gail, call the roll, please. Jack. Yes. Ed. Yes. Terry. Yes. Jackie. Yes. Jerry. Yes. And Mike. Yes. And Andrew's Andrew. back. <laughs> yes, I'm here. Oh. oh, Andrew's there? Yes. Good. Okay. Andrew, do you approve? Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, Tom, anything else, or are we finished with you for the evening? I believe we're finished for the evening. Okay. I don't think there's anything else. Gail? I think that's it. Thank you, Tom. Thank All you, right. Tom. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good evening. You okay. too. Thank you all. Good night. Uh, next on our agenda is the uh, middle school roof project. And I can see, so ah, there's Andrew. <laughs> Um, I can see uh, some of the people uh, here for that, um, and uh, Skanska is our OPM. Dale, you're here. Yeah. There you are. And and Susan. Okay. And and then who do we have from our architectural team? Uh, when I checked in with the architectural team, they hadn't received an invite, but they gave me the update for everything. Okay, uh, so do you want to uh, take us through uh, where we are in the project then, Susan? Jeffrey, yes, I will. Then um, to approve that invoice. Excuse me? I'm sorry, Susan. I have one yeah. question for Jack. Um, there's one more school roof. Yeah, I was going to start saving that for the end of this. Explanation. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Sorry, Susan, go ahead. That's okay. Uh, we had our design kickoff meeting with the team on uh, April 24th, and at that point we were discussing with Russo Bar their site investigations. They had been on site looking at the roof, exterior, uh, the masonry. They had done an interior survey looking at the ceiling tile, uh, and they had uh, presented to us their 50% uh, DD documents at that point in time. Uh, we had a chance to talk those over and they were gonna move ahead with uh, CD documents, which we are expecting to receive by end of day this Friday, the 90% drawings and specs. Uh, we're also expecting to see uh, the contract information for the front end of the spec. I know Gail has forwarded to them some information. Um, Gail, they were still uh, interested in talking to you about the form of contract because I don't think that was in uh, the package you had sent over. Uh, and they also wanted to confirm about the online bidding process if we were going to go ahead with bid docs or project dog. Um, but the uh, the date for uh, those 90% are this Friday. We're hoping to be able to turn around all of our comments on Monday, sort of get ahead of the schedule here so we can get out to bid sooner than what we had anticipated. So um, right now we were looking at uh, trying to pull together all of those CD documents next week and possibly uh, if things are very aggressive, being able to put the announcement um, out by Friday the 14th. I remember that I saw, I don't remember if every did, whether Gail forwarded the pictures and the findings to everybody. Did you do that? I thought I did, yeah. Uh, ask the group, did, did you all see the, the pictures and the findings as to uh, why the roofs were leaking? I did not, no. I, I don't remember seeing it. All right, I'll send them out again tomorrow. I thought I sent them out, but maybe not. Okay, Susan, could you just... Uh, describe um, quickly um, the major findings that Russo Bar made? Um, yeah, I think I have that from 
my notes here. Um, the on the interior, the damage was uh, mainly just the ceiling tiles, but on the exterior, uh, they said that the existing roof insulation was in good shape and could be reused. They were looking at doing a new layer um, of insulation on top of it, uh, you know, because full replacement was going to be time consuming and costly. And we were going to be able to work with what was in place. Uh, again, they would uh, call to have any damaged materials fully replaced. They did find areas uh, where the water was infiltrating. So they feel like they have a, a good understanding as to uh, each and every one of those interior stains, how it was uh, occurring, what was causing it. And they were gonna provide more details with the 90% in terms of remediation of those issues. But the, the DD set of documents included the, the full photographic record of all the cuts and samples and openings. So I think it was pretty clear, you know, that they had found all the issues and that they were gonna be able to resolve that. And we're gonna be able to review their details in this 90% set of documents. Dale, do you wanna add anything? I can't hear you. You're on mute. He's on the phone. Oh, I can't He's, hear him. Yeah. Still can't hear you. There you go. Can you hear me now? Ah, yes. now we can. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I, I think one of the big things that they uh, they reported to around the um, the walls were the two all flashings failed. Could you keep your voice up a little? Sorry. Um, That's much better. As far as it goes. Um, yeah, so, so around the um, the perimeter walls where the two wall flashing failed, that's where most of the insulation has to be replaced. Like Susan said, just uh, around the perimeter, so probably two to three feet off the wall, which is good news. So a lot of the insulation will remain in place, which is very time consuming. Um, like she said, um, we're about what, two, Susan, about two weeks ahead of schedule. Uh, we yes. Earlier now. Okay. Obviously, where there's no school in session, so um, like you said, on Friday we'll have the 90 percent. And uh, if anyone wants to see them, we're gonna uh, do a Monday morning scan skill well with our comments. We're getting back to the bar to be able to turn around quickly. Yeah. So because the school building is not currently being used and will not be for the rest of this uh, 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 school year. Um, it seems that we can get a, a head start and not have to wait until, you know, June 23rd or, or uh, to, to get this going. Is that correct? Correct. And um, in, in terms of finishing, um, what's, what are we looking at for our time to finish? Um, our current schedule, uh, if we are able to gain a week or two, uh, it would put our completion at um, August 18th, around that date. Which is good because the teachers come into the building not too long after that, correct? August 24th. Okay, so, so it gives you a week to play with. And, um, are we looking at the entire project being done at that point or just the roof? Um, part of it? Um, at this point, that was assumed to be the entire project. Okay. Uh, and we have you developed a program budget. And Gail, did you, you send that around to everybody, correct? I thought I did. Did anybody receive that program budget? Everybody received the program budget by email? Ah. Maybe I'm slipping. I don't know because there was the program budget and there was also the, the time schedule. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that everybody had gotten those. Uh, so we basically we're on budget and we're uh, ahead of schedule at this point is the bottom line, correct? Correct. So- uh, And the invoice you were referring to, Jack, um, in comparison to the cash flow that we had provided, it's it's within the, the cash flow projections that we had provided as well. 
Okay, so uh, so we have a bill from Russo Bar for a fifty uh -huh. percent uh, design complete for seventy one thousand one hundred forty dollars. Uh, are you recommending that we pay that, Susan? Yes, it's uh, definitely within what we had anticipated they would be billing at this point. Okay, so uh, I apologize for the fact that you may not have seen the program budget in the timeline, but we'll get those to you by email tomorrow, everyone. Uh, does anybody have any questions on this project for Susan or Dale? I have a question. Go um, ahead. The online bid format, um, is that something that that's going to cost a little bit of money, correct? Did, do we have an estimates on how much that will cost to advertise and to have everything done online for the bids? And I'm wondering if the if the NBC has to vote to approve to go ahead with online. Okay, so Susan, can you address that? I have those finger figures? I don't know if Dale um, knows what the cost is on those. Um, I know the high school project was done through Project Dog, but I don't know what those costs were. No, we, we can find out. Um, I don't know exactly what the cost is. Okay. Um, I remember it wasn't a tremendous amount of money with the high school project, and this is much smaller, so I can only imagine it's it's going to be that much smaller. Well, I'm going to suggest right. so that, that, I mean, people, contractors aren't going to be coming to City Hall to pick up plans. So uh, I think the... Uh, or attend a bid opening for yep. that matter, probably. Yep. Uh, so, um, actually, when you think about it, did we take the roll call vote to approve? Yep, the no. invoice, no. Uh, uh, Jackie, a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, Gail? Jack? Yes. Ed? Yes. Terry? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Mike? Yes. Andrew? Yes. It's unanimous. Okay, uh, then um, does anybody have any further questions of uh, Skanska from the commission? I have a question. Are they gonna put the two schools out to bid together or are they gonna separate them? Uh, we confirmed with the um, with Debbie Anderson at the state that we would uh, could put them out together, even though they have two separate addresses. Um, but it could be bid as one project. Okay. And I think that um, uh, the, why don't you explain the reasoning rather than me trying to do it um, for uh, for doing it that way, Susan? Uh. Well, when we had reviewed this with Russo Bar, they had felt that we, you know, the economy of scale, uh, we would get better pricing um, by doing this as one package. We would have a larger um, GC to a uh, roofing GC to be able to take on this. Um, so they thought the pricing would be better. And it would increase the pool of available contractors, correct? Uh, correct. We we um, we researched how many. Um, I think Dale was at around forty um, roofers at the time that uh, could do the project. It, yeah, based on the estimate, we had about forty potential roofers that can bond it. Um, I do know some of them are busy, and, and hopefully, it's still interest with the COVID nineteen because I do know some of the projects are on hold. Um, but you know, Russo Bar has actually Jim Russo person's reach out to them and there's still a lot of interest with both roofs. So again, if not taking insulation off, it actually is a nice job. I mean, it's, it's both schools, it's just a school, so we should have good coverage. Okay. Um, and um, this is a filed sub-bid job, yes or no? Yes. Yep. And do we know how many trades will be filed sub-bids? We believe there's only going to be one um, because the masonry um, values were close to the uh, cutoff. So we believe that's the only one. And what kind of masonry work are we doing? 
Uh, it was uh, repairs at. Um, Sorry. It, Jack, Jack, it'll be most of the through all flashing because remember they have to yeah. take that all part and make it through all. So that's the majority of the cost for the um, screen sponsor. Um, um, so that's the majority of the cost for the Mason. And so the, but the roofer will be the general contractor and the Mason will work for the roofer, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Uh, anybody have any other questions uh, for our project team? Somebody's phone's ringing. Uh, okay, hearing none, and then I guess uh, we'll uh, see you remotely in another month, uh, and uh, we'll. Uh, I hope that is a mic on. Uh, in any event, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, we'll then move on to the library project. All righty, thank you. Thank you. Okay, who's gonna take the lead on the library project here? Well, I, I guess I'll get started. I don't see, um, Evan, did you get, were you able to get on the phone? Evan, you're on mute. Evan's here. Evan, I think you're muted. Do you want to get yes. started? Yep. Sorry. Yep. I'm uh, un unmuted at this point. Um, uh, thank you, everyone, for, for having us. Um, generally, uh, our expectation is to tell you um, where we're at and how we're uh, moving forward and, and going to get there. So, um, um, BH and A has been uh, back on on uh, on site at the library, doing some uh, uh, confirming of existing conditions, um, uh, along with their mechanical engineer. Uh, we've identified that we need to um, maintain uh, a library in an open condition and to do the project in a phased manner as opposed to. Uh, shut down for an extended period of time to get that done. Uh, so we've actually come up with a um, phasing plan that we think uh, is a good route to uh, to take to get us there. Um, somewhat of a floor by floor and area by area. And uh, I'll let Deborah uh, perhaps talk about that in a minute. Um, so just generally in terms of our schedule and timeline, uh, we're looking at completing uh, design development at the end of this month um, with uh, estimates um, associated with those documents and then continuing with uh, construction documents completing at the end of uh, July and that we would be bidding the project um, in the month of August with the hopes of um, getting good bids and securing a uh, general contractor uh, and executing a contract probably um, early to mid September. Um, we did take a look at uh, the delivery method for construction, whether uh, it made sense to go CM at risk, which is chapter 149A versus uh, chapter 149, which is a traditional design bid uh, uh, build delivery system. Um, we overlaid the uh, requirements for CM. We would need to um, get permission, uh, submit an application to the IG's office. And that in essence adds a minimum of a month and a half and more like two, two and a half months to our project uh, schedule. And so for that reason, um, we feel that it's best to pursue uh, chapter 149 standard design bid build and think that the uh, project is um, uh, clear enough and concise enough to be able to do that um, and, and to do that well. So um, the intent again would be to uh, execute a contract and immediately start um, with the contractor mobilizing and uh, they will need to execute some subcontracts and uh, 
put together some submittals. Uh, as it, again, we'd be going through a kind of a multi-phase project to work around various areas of the library, largely for the mechanical work that would need to go on uh, inside. Um, certainly we would be looking to perform uh, roof and exterior um, upgrades, uh, window work, things like that um, towards uh, the latter part of the fall and then again in the, in the spring. Um, so we would expect that this, uh, with the phasing and the type of work that we actually have here for this project, that we're talking about roughly a 10 month construction duration, um, which would put us complete um, sometime early summer. And uh, so a couple of challenges is how do we proceed with um, uh, trying to replace a complete replacement of um, your HVAC systems that are failing uh, during the winter months that are coming up. Um, and then also um, making sure that we're uh, complete and that we have some uh, cooling ability for uh, next, next summer. So um, uh, we think we've got a pretty good plan mapped out and I think perhaps with that, I'll um, kick it over to you, Deborah, if that's all right. Uh, great, thanks. Um, I don't know if you need us to, to summarize again uh, what we're proceeding with on the scope, but um, back in 2018, we had done a report, uh, we did a survey, we did test cuts, um, and uh, there was a cost estimate related to that that put a number of uh, $5.4 million construction cost to the work. Um, so that's, that's what we're proceeding with. And it's basically two main components to the project. Uh, the first to solve moisture and uh, air infiltration at the exterior. We're doing work at the masonry cleaning, repointing. Uh, some of it is, is uh, aesthetic, it, it looks bad, um, uh, but it's also damaging the stone. Um, the windows are leaking. So it will be involved uh, sealing up the windows uh, the roofing, uh, one main roof was from 2017, so that will remain and be repaired, but the rest of the roofing will be replaced. Uh, so that's the exterior scope. And then at the interior, it is a full removal of the existing mechanical uh, heating and cooling and ventilation systems and uh, providing new. So we, we put together a document to show how this could be phased, so, so the library would be able to remain open and only a small area at a time would be given over to the contractor. Um, so we've uh, come up with four phases and the first phase, uh, which would be from the start in September would be when the contractor is mobilizing for the mechanical, uh, doing all the submittals, getting the, the lead times in place for some of the bigger equipment. But we figured we'd start with the roofs that are leaking the flat roofs, and those could be started pretty much right away and be done before the bad weather hits again. Uh, then in terms of the, the mechanical, the idea would be to start from the top to the fourth floor all at once uh, together and keeping the, the heating system up and running uh, and, and not have any downtime with unheated spaces. So the first floor uh, at the beginning, then the second and third floor uh, together, we do the north half, second and third floor, then south half, second and third floor, um, and then uh, do the first floor at the end. And that is a, a schedule that we've looked at with, with the team and with the, the library and that uh, for the moment seems to be a, a reasonable number of phases to be able to, to have the contractor be as efficient as possible and, and give them as much as possible at a time, yet closing down only air, select areas so the library can still function. Um, obviously, uh, the entry, the main lobby, the elevator, uh, egress circulation would have to be maintained through all the phases. So um, again, we'll have to develop this more once we have a better idea of exact durations and a contractor on site to see exactly how much of each space would need to be shut down for how long 
but um, <clears throat> we're confident that a 10 month overall schedule makes sense. And the work for the heating system would not be up and running with a new system for the winter, as, uh, as Evan said, but it would happen in the spring and would be in place with the air conditioning in place before next summer. Um, I know there are a few issues that uh, we talked about in our kickoff calls. Uh, one of the issues uh, is that when certain areas of the library are out of condition, we're actually gonna be uh, covering the collection with in plastic, sealing it in, uh, keeping the dust out of it. Could you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah, so. Um, well, the, the areas that are at the stacks, at the second and third floors primarily, the heating work is at the perimeter. Um, so we think it is reasonable to just cover and um, and close in and, and have enough dust protection, obviously. So it's not just a, a sheet draped over that it's actually um, enclosed and the contractor would otherwise have, um, have access to the rest of the space and they could do that work at the perimeter without disrupting anything and there would be no need to start moving books or moving stacks. Um, I think overall, it's something that we haven't started to really plan out, but something that we should be looking at moving forward would be how much of the furniture in the library overall would wanna be moved for the contractor access and who will be doing that, what the library, the city will be doing and what would be left for the contractor to do. Um, so we'll be looking at that in more detail. Okay. Um, you also had mentioned that there might uh, need to be some uh, ADA survey and analysis done. Um, that is correct. So the overall construction cost of the project, which is uh, more than 30% of the value of the building, is actually dictating that the full building be brought up to current code. Um, at the time the building was built, there was uh, the uh, Massachusetts Access Code from 1987 was the, the code in place, and the, the current code is from 2006. So uh, we started to look at what some of the changes might be and some of the deficiencies might be. Um, it's, it's unlikely that there's anything significant some of the issues that have changed that have become more strict have to do with things like um, clearances in bathrooms. Um, so we will go in and look at that and see exactly what the deficiencies are. Um, you're not required to repair things if there is significant cost with no gain, or I, I don't know the, the exact terminology, but but there are, some way, there are some times when you don't have to uh, make the repair if it's an unreasonable cost for minimal gain. Um, but we will look at that and we'll provide information on exactly what is non-compliant at the moment. Right, and with the 1992, or the last renovation, the, the major cost items have been picked up with the elevators and the accessible entry and that. So our costs for the more minor um, ADA improvements is carried in what was called the design contingency of the dataless cost estimate. So there's funds for these minor repairs anticipated. Okay, um, and I might be confusing this with another project, but did we also have to do a hazardous waste survey, uh, asbestos, whatever? There was an asbestos survey done along with the report and it identified materials of, there were some um, roof flashing materials, some asbestos caulk and glazing at the windows. So all the exterior materials had been identified. There was some discussion recently that if, should we do some more testing in case there's anything that we might be disrupting at the interior that has asbestos. Um, the only things we're dis disturbing at the inside might be things like uh, flooring, drywall, where we're putting in some new cabinet heaters. So, and that's pretty much at the 1992 building. So it is very 
unlikely that there's uh, any asbestos at the interior. Okay. Uh, I know that we have uh, a whole lot of people from the uh, library, from the staff and the board who have uh, signed on. Uh, I think it might be appropriate to ask if uh, any of them have any questions or comments uh, based on what you've heard so far. Well, hearing none, I guess you're all satisfied with everything you've heard. I may not have voice access. Um, Deborah and I had trouble with that originally, so. No, they're on. Oh, okay. They just got to unmute themselves. Yeah, they have to unmute yourself if you want to speak, someone like Diane or Charlie or whoever. Yes, I have a question. This is Charlie. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. Question uh, has to do with uh, the possibility of um, upgrades to the elevator, which is a constant source of uh, difficulties right at the moment. And I noted in your minutes from April 24th that uh, that was a consideration. Has there been thought given to that? Evan, Deborah, who wants to handle that? Oh. Sorry, I'm having a really hard time hearing. I heard yeah, something about I elevators. I can take that. The issue with the elevators, we understand the scope of work. This is Joel Bartman. Um, we would be willing to put it into our scope of work um, because it's, it's pretty well defined. It's, it's not a, a big problem to incorporate it. The question would be is whether the town, uh, the city of Attleboro would be allowed to have that work be done because the bond was uh, provided for a certain scope of work and the elevator wasn't included in that. So I think that there was going to be a uh, work by the city attorney to determine or the purchasing agent to determine if that elevator could be incorporated. And then if it can be, we'll do that. Yeah, I think that uh, that's a question for Deb Gould, the auditor. Uh, have we gotten a ruling yet, Gail? Not yet. I sent her information today. I'm sure she will look at it soon and let us know. Okay. And the good news is, is that because there were some lighting upgrades already done in the library, we have money in the budget to do it. Uh, the unknown is whether we would have to go back to the city council and ask for an amendment to the bond issue. Um, and so if Deb rules that we can do it, uh, I think uh, I would recommend to the commission that we certainly uh, you know, take care of this problem while we're at it. Uh, in the event that Deb says we cannot, then I think we need to have a discussion with the mayor uh, as to uh, you know, what his policy would be and whether he wants to send down an amendment to the, uh, to the city council. Thank so, you. okay. Any other uh, board members uh, or staff members have questions? Okay, I guess hearing nothing is good. Uh, so uh, Joel, Deborah, Evan, anything that you want to add to, uh, to the discussion or have you covered everything? I think we're good for now. So I... I I do think that we've largely covered uh, everything, but since we have some of the library folks um, on board and, and attending, um, we will certainly. We our intent is to is to coordinate um, computers, servers, that IT types of uh, things that can be sensitive to dust and construction to coordinate the proper um, uh, disconnecting and. Um, potentially moving of some of that equipment. Um, and although we haven't specifically talked about it, um, we would certainly be asking um, Chris and other folks at the library to identify um, any particular uh, sensitive areas or materials um, that, uh, you know, have some value, whether it's, you know, monetary value or or not just that, um, you know, if there's a certain piece of artwork on the wall that someone had donated, we would want to make sure that if, um, if that wasn't in, in, uh, if it was in a, in an area that might, um, get some, some activity that we would go ahead and, um, 
carefully remove and protect that and make sure that, you know, whether it was that item or, um, you know, certain collections and whatnot, uh, that if we need to address those in a different fashion than the, um, than the other collections uh, as, a, as a whole. So we're, we're certainly sensitive to that and, and aware of that and we'll continue to coordinate uh, accordingly. Okay, uh, and uh, I think we um, we have a uh, a budget um, that looks like uh, is going to work. Um, so uh, I think we're uh, we're on track on this project. Um, so um, I think then that the only thing left to do is to publicly thank Gail for her service to us for how long now? It's about three years. Three years, three fabulous years. I can tell you that she makes my life very easy and I think she has been a tremendous uh, asset to the Municipal Building Commission. And so uh, I think we ought to have a virtual round of applause for Gail. Yay! Thank you. Oh, it's been a pleasure working Go. with everyone. So uh, Jeremy is uh, now the Director of Budget and Administration for the city. Jeremy, why don't you introduce yourself and explain what your role is going to be? Sure. Well, um, great to meet all of you. Um, be working with you with the NBC, the SBC as well. So like Jack said, I'm Jeremy Stoll, the Director of Budget and Administration. Um, come here from the public schools of Brookline where I've worked in budget for a couple of years as well. Um, so right now we're um, hammering on budget, but I'll be taking um, a lot of the projects that are on Gail's desk now and come into my portfolio. So between the high school, uh, library, um, all the projects we covered tonight. Um, so I'm excited to, to get to work with you um, and, and, and look forward to the partnership. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Uh, and then for those of you who are on the Municipal Building Commission, just remember that next week at this time, we will having a school building uh, committee meeting. Uh, looking forward to having the uh, guaranteed maximum price uh, and uh, a whole bunch of other issues uh, that we'll uh, be covering at uh, our usual 5.30 time. So, uh, Unless anybody has anything else, I'll throw it open. Does anybody have anything else they want to bring up? When's the next meeting? Uh, let's, yeah, let's do that. Uh, June 3rd would be the next meeting. Uh, so all of you who would wish to participate, um, again, uh, same three, uh, same three projects, and we'll try to uh, stagger it again a little bit so everybody doesn't have to listen to everybody else if they don't want to. So uh, June 3rd is the next meeting. Uh, you anticipate that will be remote as well in June? I heard today that there's going to be some sort of a phased reopening of Massachusetts starting on the 18th. I don't think anybody knows what that means. So I think it is highly likely that June 3rd will be a remote meeting again. So uh, with that having been said, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. I need to call the roll. Yes. Jack. Yes. Ed. Yes. Terry. Yes. Jackie. Yes. Jerry. Yes. Mike. Yes. And Andrew. Yes. And we are adjourned at 619. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.